It's impossible to talk about leadership today without talking about what's happening all around us. And yeah, not just in the workplace. The workplace as we know it has already been radically changed. I wouldn't say transformed because that may put too much of a positive spin on what we've been going through. The pandemic is still with us and we're now dealing with massive economic and market pressures. And in American society, we are dealing with a reckoning that involves each of us. But There are tremendous opportunities in any crisis to learn, to evolve, to resolve to be better, make better decisions, and adapt. For leaders, this is a time when you want to be there for your people, front and center, present. No matter where the workplace is, that is the bottom line. Leaders lead. So today on this episode of Work Trends, sponsored by Reward Gateway, we are talking about how to lead through this uncertainty, how to lead in a crisis, and what it takes to lead effectively. We are going to be looking at how to lead your organization, your workforce, your teams, how to be present as well as strategic, and how to convey the information you need to convey with an approach that builds trust and eases minds. With me today is Doug Butler, the CEO of Reward Gateway. Welcome to the Work Trends Podcast from Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan M. Biro. Every week, we interview interesting people who are reimagining work. And join us on Twitter every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, using the hashtag WorkTrends. These past few months, we've been through incredible crisis and turbulence. I'm not going to cite the numbers of COVID-19 cases because by the time I do, they're going to change. Nor can I really quote market numbers because those are changing too in a heartbeat. As states open up, some workplaces are returning to on-site, while others are still in lockdown with workforces functioning remotely. On top of the health crisis, the economic crisis, we have had profound and pretty heartbreaking periods of unrest. But it's opened up a new national conversation and exposed some deep rifts in leadership that we need to and have to understand. And yeah, it's not over yet. The intersections between work, health, business, and leadership are turning out to be fault lines in some cases. As Bloomberg News reports, a group of Amazon warehouse employees in Staten Island have sued the online retail giant, saying the working conditions, workplace safety policies, and pressure to produce at speed not only placed at them at the risk of contracting COVID-19, but also their family members, one of whom died. Also, in Fast Company, there's an article about the actual term for the pandemic blues, which many people are reporting. It's called adjustment disorder. And as a leader, you will likely have to make sure you're supporting the inevitable segment of your workforce suffering from it. How can you keep your people safe? How do you provide comfort? Clearly, Amazon wasn't too concerned with this, and now they may pay dearly for it. But for the rest of us, there's a business case and an ethical case for ensuring welfare and well-being of our employees. Even if we have to make some tough decisions, even then, there's a way to lead that makes people feel heard. There's a way to help your workforce feel a part of a larger struggle to stay on an even keel and steer a course through a crisis, to feel engaged and motivated to go that extra mile, to be willing to pivot during tough times and adapt to new directives because they are part of the company and they trust their leader. So there have been some not so great examples of leadership of late, right? To be sure, not going to name any names right now, but we know you're out there. Okay. We know you're on Twitter too, by the way, you're doing a bad job of it. Anyways, you know, today we're looking at the good side of leadership at the most effective, compassionate, and also business-focused strategies to lead your company during the time of uncertainty and crisis. Today, I want to welcome Doug Butler. He's the CEO of Reward Gateway to the podcast. Doug is a passionate, true believer in the power and value of employee engagement. He spent the bulk of his career as a CFO in startups and growing companies, some successful, some not so much, as he says. And he's seen firsthand how businesses and cultures are built or broken on mission, values, and employee engagement. Since 2016, he's been involved with Reward Gateway, a business whose mission is to make the world a better place to work 
He's passionate about employees living and breathing that mission. I know for a fact he is because I've hung out with Doug before in person, and I've seen the culture at Reward Gateway for myself and was just completely blown away. You know, something to know about Doug, he has visited 49 of the 50 states, so you could say he has a longitude and a latitude of experience and Welcome, Doug. Hi, Megan. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's good to have you here. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So where are you today? Tell the audience. I am in Marin County, just north of San Francisco. And uh, you mentioned my travel. Typically, I'm traveling three to three to four weeks out of the month. And now I haven't traveled about three and a half months. So it feels a little strange. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called lockdown. And he's been living it 247. And You know, there's a positive and there's drawbacks to some of this. I mean, Doug, what are you experiencing? Yeah, because you're so used to being on the road. What does it feel like? Well, it's mixed. I am am used to be on the road. I I do travel. You know, our offices are in, um, we have two in the UK. We have uh, two offices in Australia, an office in Bulgaria, and we have an office in Rochester, New York, and in Boston. So I pretty much am in one of those offices every week. And so it's it's disappointing. It's sad not to be able to see see our people face to face. But when I'm not traveling, I actually do work from home. So this this isn't really much different for me other than it's an extended period of time. Well, you know, everybody out there in the work trends community, obviously, you know, these are not easy times for so many people. We are definitely in a leadership crisis right now, to say the least. Doug, talk to us about how can leaders bring their people in their company through crisis? I mean, you've talked about the need to take a balanced approach, such as caution and optimism and kind of balancing those two things. Talk to us more about that. I think when I talk about the the balanced approach, it has, has a lot to do with communication. And part of it has to do with the timing of where you are in a crisis. And in this crisis, as you know, where we are today is I don't know. I mean, it's so much different than where we were just two weeks ago and six weeks ago and eight weeks ago. Uh, things are changing really rapidly. And even obviously this this past week or so, we've got a whole other set of challenges and crises going on around the country and around the globe that come into our business as well that we have to deal with. So, But in terms of balance, it's when I talk about being optimistic at the initial stages of the, the coronavirus crisis that we're, we're dealing with, you know, it's kind of a free fall. You know, it was really quickly. People had to basically lock down business for the most part in terms of new business and communications with clients or prospects just kind of shut down as people were making their way home. So in terms of optimism, the only thing I could do with my team was to basically leverage my years of experience, that is my age, and basically let them know that I have at least been through things, if not exactly like this, similar crises, both professionally and personally, all the way back to 1988. I was on Wall Street for the what was then the biggest crash ever. I was in my office uh, at, during when 9-11 occurred. I was with a startup when we had the financial crisis back in 2008. So I could speak to them about at least being optimistic that we're going to get through this. Just just hunker down and there will be something on the other side. So that you know that's the optimistic part. And, and the cautious part, was that obviously we were dealing with the health crisis immediately, but there was clearly a financial crisis coming as well. And we still see it coming, at least at at some level. And really just had to caution them that that there might be ramifications to the business. There might be things that we have to change that might be painful. So, but that we would let them know as as much as we know uh, when we knew it. One of the things I like so much about you, Doug, having met you in person and just spent time with you and I've met your daughter daughter who's super awesome. And, you know, I feel like I'm part of this extended family of Reward Gateway. You have this nice balance to you, though. I mean, there's definitely a cautious optimism in your own brand. And I find it interesting that you're bringing those things up because those are the two words that I, I think about when I think of you, Doug. So it's it's interesting how you have the context, you have the history to say, we've been there before. And, and, and you also have emotional intelligence because there's a lot of leaders out there that wouldn't do what you did. And you're, you're putting yourself in people's shoes, basically, and saying, well, what is it like to be 22 years old right now or 28 years old or 37 and et cetera? You know, not everybody's been here before. Let's all remember that as we talk about the way the world is right now. And I think there's so much uncertainty now about what what comes next. 
and about how we're going to move our workforces back into the workspace or whether we're going to do it at all. I mean, how are we going to salvage any connections that were lost if they were? How do we keep everybody productive and confident enough to keep working and stay aligned? I mean, how do you suggest handling all of this? Well, it's funny you talk about sort of the reconnecting people or, or salvaging connections. I, I think at least for us, we I think we've done a nice job keeping the connections throughout this, throughout this situation. We benefit from the fact that we probably have 25 to 30 percent of our staff that work from home two to three days a week in any case. So when we sent the whole company home, it wasn't as, as big a transition for people as for our company as it might have been for others. So we pretty much tried to maintain a connection throughout and sure, we'll talk about some more, but you know, we, from a leadership perspective, we immediately jumped into sort of hyper visibility. And it, it's ironic that you, you could possibly be more, more visible while you're remote than, than you might be otherwise, you know. So, you know, I spoke to my leadership. I, I made sure that we were dropping in on video calls and things that we might have otherwise had skipped, you know. So we, I think we've been showing up a lot more and we've been, you know, communicating that uh, throughout the business and asking others to, to do the same. So, you know, but it's interesting when you talk about coming back. I mean, there are logistical things that right now appear to be a nightmare. What is coming back going to be? You've been to our offices or at least at least a few of our offices. And they're I'll, I'll say they're a lot of fun. I'm not sure that's the right word, but they're open space. It, I don't know if they call it hot desking or agile working. You know, nobody has a desk. They come in, sit somewhere different each day throughout the day. And now that's going to be a challenge. So we're looking at our offices, which has become a, a major part of our culture and saying, OK, now we have to rethink those or we probably have to rethink those. So there's lots of little challenges like that. But the challenge of connection um, and, and keeping the connection connection, the relationship. I think we've actually done a really good job of keeping those going the, throughout this process. Well, and let's be honest, you had you had it before this all happened. The brands that don't have that are really struggling right now. You know, culture was always and is always at the forefront of, of your brand. I know because I've been in those walls. I've seen the communication and, and that level, right? But you brought up something and, and a word we call video. With this kinds of communication, is that what helps create that element of trust, especially when you have to make some hard decisions either now or in the near future? I mean, do you feel like that's helping you as a leader build trust quicker, et cetera? Talk to us about just your thoughts on video and, and how it relates to all of this. Well, I'll talk, I'll talk about two kinds of video. You know, the video conference call that, you know, where you're speaking to someone or speaking to a group of people, you know, Zoom or, or whatever format you're using. You know, that's something we're pretty used to and that's helpful. I'm not, I'm not sure that's any better or worse. It actually probably, you can, you're probably bringing in even more colleagues into discussions than you might otherwise do. But the other thing which is interesting is, you know, you know, I write a blog uh, every week for the company that comes out on Monday mornings. And I started probably about 50% of the time, about a year ago, six months ago, maybe maybe nine months ago, I started including an introductory video. People can sort of choose. They can read my blog or they can watch my video. And it really personalized it, or I found that it personalized it and people enjoyed that. Now, through this crisis, every single one of my communications to the business, whether it's my Monday blog or other, other communications, whether we're announcing the office moves or or the office timings and things like that. Every one of them now, uh, I include a video because it, it brings a personal touch. And, and I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback inside the business that's been very well received. And I've asked all my leadership team to do the same. So all of their communications typically now include a video just to, again, sort of personalize the messages that we're, that we're making that we need to make. Good for you. That's an awesome move. It's easy. I mean, it's, it's, you, you get, you get better at it, which is, which is a good thing. So, so it's a, uh, a little, a little bit of um, developmental work while we're in the, in this well, crisis that's as thing. well. You can't be perfect at everything, everyone. You know, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of us are are getting on video. If you've been hesitant about it before, guess what? Now is the time. And I'm finding myself, I'm doing more of it too, Doug. So it's a work in progress, right? We we are all working on this together. That's the good part. What are some of the other challenges you're facing? I mean, you know, let's talk about your experience because you've got again a wealth of it even prior to Reward Gateway. What are you finding the single most biggest challenge right now, if you had to pick something? Because I know we got a lot to pick from everyone, but let's pick one. I, I think it's been the uncertainty. I don't 
I don't know whether every day brings a little bit more certainty or not, but I think it's been the uncertainty and that's that's been the biggest challenge across the business for our people, not knowing exactly what's coming next. Fortunately, our business is structured in a way that it kind of just keeps going. I mean, we, you know, our clients are using our product every single day, are on our platform every day doing what they do on it. So, and throughout this crisis, actually, they've reached out and they've needed a lot of our help a lot more. Part of our product is communication. So there's there's a lot of work that, that's being done on our platform with, with this remote working. And we've been spending a lot of time with clients. We've found ourselves to be, uh, if not thought leaders, certainly uh, very helpful consultants in showing people what we're doing, giving people templates for how they might uh, want to to do some of those things the way in which we've done them. You know, and, and again, and all, the, all the while, we're, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do next. Uh, but I, I would say the biggest challenge is probably the uncertainty in managing people's emotions and their morale. Yeah. And when we talk about those things, we're really talking about sustaining engagement. And that's the challenge, I think, for so many companies right now. How do you sustain this, this feeling amidst all this uncertainty and um, just, this, frankly, just a lot of sadness, especially in the last week or so of just what we're experiencing? But, you know, let's turn that around. Let's talk a little bit about optimism during all of this, because I think we also need to talk about opportunities, particularly for leaders. Are you finding lessons in this crisis and in the many challenges that we have come out of? I mean, where are we seeing opportunities for wisdom and say something called growth? Let me, I do want to touch on something before I get to the the optimism part, and that is the word sustain, I think is, is absolutely critical. You know, that, that's what I look at too, in terms of how do we sustain this? You know, when we went into, into lockdown or into remote working, was it going to be a week, two weeks? Then it turned into six and eight and 12. And now we don't know how long it's going to be. There's a bit of adrenaline when you first get into it, a little bit of excitement and people. It's a, it's a fun new concept. And there, I would say a little bit more of engagement and myself and leaders are engaging more. People are listening more. Sustaining that through now, what is an uncertain amount of time is, is difficult. But anyway, back to your question about opportunities. I'd say that's one of, one of my other ironically big challenges is seeing too many opportunities that this is this is kind of a changing world i think it's changing and at least certain parts will seem as though they're going to change indefinitely there are opportunities there there are things that come up every single day as we think about applications for our product things we can things ways in which uh, we can use or other people can use our products uh, in a more effective way things we ways in which we might tweak the product to go one direction or another to to support people more in, in a new environment i think a big challenge for us is trying to figure out, okay, now what do we prioritize? What comes first? What do we decide to do here? Uh, we can't do everything. Let's focus. But the, I think there are a lot of opportunities because it's it's change and change does can be disruptive. But again, it, it naturally creates new opportunities to do things differently. The market really has changed, Doug. Is there one piece of this puzzle that has changed dramatically or that you're surprised by when we when we talk about how the market has changed and what you're offering. I guess again, I mean, a lot of it really just has to do with communication and, and connection. We we've we've always talked about not a slogan, but a, a message, which is you know, communications is at the core of of our product, even though, you know, we provide a host of, of other services, recognitions, really employee recognition is a big part of our offering as, as well as some employee benefits and things like that, you know, but it's all centered around communication. And now with remote working, being able to connect with your people, having a place where your employees know where to find you, where you can capture their attention and basically tell them what they need to know or what you need them to know. That's been a big focus for us. And it's not a surprise, but it, it's just become more acute. It's been become a clearer that communication, being able to communicate, making sure you are constantly communicating and able to communicate with your teams, that's just become that, that much more evident now in, the, in this situation. Okay, so I have to know this. I mean, how do you decide what opportunities to act on and what to hold back on? I know I struggle with that every day. You know, so, so many companies have had to shift so quickly. So I guess the question really becomes, Doug, are you going to be able to make the room in the space to test out new opportunities? Or do you think you just have to kind of seize the moment and go for it? Well, I think fortunately, you know, some businesses will be able to take on uh, more challenges than others. We're, we're fortunate with our business model, liquidity, capitalization, things like that. Uh, we can probably take some more you know, measured risks and, and try some things and just go for it, as, as you say. But we also don't don't want to waste time and, and go in go in the wrong directions. It's not a democracy here, but we do spend a lot of time 
uh, listening and, and discussing things across the team, across the business. We get a lot of feedback. We really try to let the market demands, market requirements uh, lead us in the directions that, that we go, obviously within the context of what our what our general product offering is. Uh, so I, th- I think listening is now, you know, it's always really been a, a really important part of what we do, both from a cultural point of view as well as a business point of view. And I think I think that's we do the same when we make our decisions. I think we're humble enough and uh, open enough. Uh, with each other in the business to uh, to be able to have someone say, well, that's a really stupid idea. It seemed really good last night, but like, half, the people, in the room, yeah, half yeah. the people in the room are saying that that's kind of dumb. And OK, well, maybe maybe we won't go that way. Love that. Not every idea is good. Everyone remember that. <laughs> it's okay to that's, say that's, that's, definitely, that's definitely true but we also are willing to make mistakes we're willing to try something and we'll turn it off real quickly if, if we if we realize that, it, that it's going in the wrong direction we try we try not to get it started before it goes in the wrong direction but if we do and we need to change the business and our culture is definitely very open to reversing course and again it comes down to communication and we're open and honest communication is that is something we say and we and we live all the time and what it means for us is we tell people everything we can as quickly as we can. And we explain why we're doing something as often as we can. So when we make a decision, people, we explain why we're doing it and people know why we're doing it. And when we make a mistake, we explain why we made the mistake and why we're changing. It's a very liberating management style, to be honest. It's not one that I came into this business with much experience with. Not that I wasn't honest or open, but it's, you know, it's it's on a you know, at Reward Gateway, it's, it's been part of the culture. It's a, a PhD in open and honest communications. If you're out there listening and you're one of the hundreds and hundreds of companies that struggle with communication, hint, hint, you're out there, I know you are, you know, take a listen here. You know, there's something very interesting about what Doug's saying. It's it's okay to fail, right? It's okay to make mistakes. Sometimes just letting people know why is really a powerful thing. So, and you know, Doug, in some cases, what you're able to do is embrace change and leverage it into growth. But in terms of your workforce, how is this going to play out? I mean, how are you managing them through these kinds of changes? You know, you've got different satellite offices and all that jazz. Again, it's, I mean, it's, hate to hate to keep saying the same thing. We just keep communicating. We honestly just keep letting them know what's in front of us, what we are considering. You know, obviously there there are some decisions, whether they're personnel or others, that everybody doesn't get the full insight into and we give them as much insight as, as we can or as is proper. But but as far as going going forward, you know, fortunately it's we are, we have always been anchored by, we will continue to be anchored by our mission. Uh, you mentioned it before, to make the world a better place to work. It's big and it's lofty. It also embraces a lot. So it'll, it'll, it allows us to, to do a lot of things and also keeps us from doing things. And we, we can always fall back uh, on the decisions we make. We can always fall back and it will always reflect some some part of that mission. It, it will always be consistent with that mission, uh, consistent with the, the values that we, we talk about in the business all the time, that everybody in the company knows very well because it's we sprinkle our values and discussion of our values and our mission into all of our communications so people are very, very familiar with them. So when we make decisions, they're always framed by the values and certainly are within the context of our mission. So important. Something you had said at one point was around knowing a company or a person's tolerance for disruptions. I thought that was, it's interesting if you really look at it, because that's what we're experiencing is disruptive everything right now. Yeah. And I think that that goes back to the question you you asked me earlier about, you know, which, which opportunities pursue and which ones not to pursue, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, product, new product opportunities, you know, we actually had two acquisitions that were sort of under letter of intent just last year. And we decided to step away from them uh, late last year, both of them. And partly because didn't think the business was quite ready for the disruption. And actually this was even before the COVID crisis. So, so better lucky than smart not because they weren't great businesses that we were considering, just because it would have been very difficult to transition with those right now. But, you know, I think you do need to know how adept your your organization is at change, um, how how much they can bend without breaking. 
you know, again, how much change can you make over, over a certain period of time and make it comfortable? You know, we don't change things just for change's sake, you know, but definitely company or uh, your people's tolerance for change is, um, is, yeah, it's is all important over to consider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's crystal ball time, Doug. Let's talk about your predictions. What do you think? And I mean, this is a tricky question, obviously, right now, but what are your predictions for the future of work? It's interesting. I, I think that, you know, one of the things that, that we've talked about a lot in our, our business is very, very centered on culture, very centered on employee recognition and employee engagement and, and the value of that. And one of the reasons, you know, frankly, in our marketing, we, we talk about employee engagement. One of the key items has been employee retention because it's been, you know, basically was a close to zero unemployment out out there for the past past several years at least in the US and in the markets we operate in you know the employment the employment market's been so tight the war for talent and being able to retain your people and create an environment that they want to stay with you that's been really important and obviously that's that's what our business and our products are all about that's clearly going to change with I think just today they announced another couple million unemployment claims and there's 40 million unemployed now in the US clearly the, the employment market's going to be a little bit less tight uh, going forward. And I think what's the, the challenge now, you know, so aside from obviously the remote workforce and the the logistical challenges and, and the new tools and, and ways of doing things that, that uh, people need to, to embrace to, to just operate their business normally. From a, an employee perspective, HR perspective, obviously employee retention might not be quite as difficult, if you will, as it used to be. However, I think employee engagement and, and recognition and, and culture and values are probably even more important because now you're going to be faced, you know, if, if you're not focused on culture, if you're not focused on engaged employees, now you're going to have, frankly, there's going to be a larger percentage of your employees who aren't leaving, who don't really want to be there, but they're not leaving. And I mean, and that's, you know, I don't know whether it's a drag on productivity or just really a drag on the business. It's it, overall, that's a challenge. So I think engagement, recognition, all those things that we've always encouraged, partly from a retention point of view, are probably even more important now but for, for different reasons. I cannot agree with you more, Doug. And I mean, the idea of retaining your talent and making sure you're not just keeping people on board to keep people on board, uh, we know where that goes. And it doesn't end well for either the brand or the employee. It, don't do it. It's not a place where you're going to find any sort of happiness in the end. That's the sad part. So, you know, I think we're all moving in a remote direction, whether we like it or not. And I think engage engagement, sustaining that engagement is so very important. So, uh, Doug, thank you so much for stopping on by and sharing your sage with us. Love talking to you again. It's great speaking with you. Let's keep talking. Join us for our Work Trends Twitter chat. We are going to be on the Twitters with Doug Butler and the team at Reward Gateway on Wednesday, June 17th from 1.30 p.m. Eastern to 2 o'clock p.m to talk about how leaders can steer their organizations through crisis, inspiring engagement, alignment, and trust. Thanks for listening to Work Trends from Talent Culture. Join us every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for a live Twitter chat with our podcast guest. To learn more about guests featured on today's show, visit the show notes for this episode at talentculture.com and help us spread the word. Subscribe to Work Trends wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating, review, and iTunes. Share Work Trends with your coworkers, your friends. Look forward to it. See you next time. <laughs>